This animation will explain the basic principle of AR-15 style rifles, such as the M16. The standard M16 was equipped with a carrying handle and iron sights. The rear and the front sight could be adjusted with a cartridge to zero the rifle. A low light level sight system for the M16 was also available. It featured a rear sight with a larger aperture of 7 mm and a front sight with radioactive tritium for visible light at night. Newer versions have been equipped with a low light level system and an elevation knob for better targeting. Today, a lot of accessories are available for AR-15 style rifles. Fluted barrels save weight and dissipate heat easily. Let's have a look at the M16's trigger mechanism. Initially, the M16 assault rifle could fire in semi-automatic and fully automatic mode. When in safe mode, the trigger cannot be pulled because of the selector's shape. When the selector is moved to semi-automatic mode, the recess in the bottom of the selector allows the trigger to move when it is pulled. As soon as the trigger is pulled, it releases the hammer. When the bolt carrier pushes down the hammer, the disconnector locks it in place. Before another shot can be fired, the trigger must be released so that the trigger sear engages the hammer again. In fully automatic mode, the trigger can move freely, whereas the disconnector stays at its position. The selector has a recess for the auto sear. The auto sear catches the hammer when the bolt carrier moves backwards. When the bolt carrier moves forward to chamber a new cartridge, the bolt carrier pushes the auto sear forward, releasing the hammer. Now, let's have a look at the bolt carrier. The bolt carrier houses the bolt that has several locking lugs, which are also called bolt lugs, and a cam pin. When the hammer strikes the firing pin, the firing pin is pushed forward. The firing pin hits the bottom of the cartridge, which consists of the case, the propellant, the bullet, and the primer. The case of the cartridge is filled with the propellant. At the bottom of the case is the primer. The primer holds the priming mixture. When the rifle's firing pin strikes the primer cap, the priming mixture explodes, resulting in the ignition of the propellant. The propellant is available in different shapes and mixtures. It is usually smokeless powder that reaches temperatures above 2,000 degrees Celsius. The pressure in the case pushes the bullet out of the case through the barrel to the target with a velocity of around one kilometer per second. The gas block and the gas tube connect the barrel with the bolt carrier. pressure provided by the propellant is transmitted to the bolt carrier. Consequently, it is pushed back. The bolt is unlocked and moved backwards by the bolt carrier by means of the cam pin. The extractor removes the spent case from the chamber while the spring-loaded ejector ejects it.
the buffer spring is compressed and ready to release the stored energy. Consequently, it will push the bolt carrier back to its initial position. The bolt chambers a new cartridge. When the cartridge is fully seated in the chamber, the bolt is locked through the rotation. Let's see it again from another perspective. The bolt pushes the cartridge into the chamber. When the bolt cannot move any further, the bolt carrier rotates the bolt through the cam pin. That way, the firearm can withstand the high pressure created by the propellant when the gun is fired. Let's see again the locking mechanism. In fully automatic mode, the rifle would release the hammer and fire. Because many soldiers would fire in fully automatic mode and waste ammunition, the burst mode was introduced. When the trigger is pulled, only three rounds are fired. This is possible through a spring clutch. The diameter of the spring clutch gets smaller or larger according to the direction of the force. So, when the trigger is pulled, the hammer strikes the firing pin. When the hammer is pushed back by the bolt carrier, the disconnector cam rotates thanks to the spring clutch. This is done three times until the burst cam follower reaches the stop notch. Because the stop notch is deeper, the disconnector holds back the hammer. So, the trigger must be released to fire again. Let's see it again from the side view. The civilian AR-15 can only fire in semi-automatic mode. It does not have parts and recesses needed for fully automatic firing. Furthermore, the lower receiver does not have room for the auto sear and only a full auto bolt carrier can trip the auto sear. The M16 and other AR-15 style rifles usually use direct impingement to cycle the action. So, when the bolt carrier moves backwards, residue can enter the upper receiver and other parts. This gunshot residue can become a big problem when the rifle is not cleaned regularly. Let's have a look at the upper receiver. When the rifle is not cleaned regularly, deposits can be found on the walls of the firearm's upper receiver over time. This can lead to increased friction between the upper receiver and the bolt carrier, so that the bolt carrier gets stuck and a new cartridge cannot be chambered. Here, the forward assist can help. Pushing the forward assist plunger will move the bolt carrier forward thanks to the notches. This can be done until the bolt is locked and the rifle is ready to fire. Flash hiders are common on military rifles. Flash suppressors hide the flash so that the soldier is not blinded in low light shooting conditions. They do this by dispersing the burning gases so that they cool much faster. When the magazine is empty, the spring-loaded magazine follower, which pushes the cartridges to the top of the magazine, pushes up the bolt catch. By this, the bolt catch locks the bolt. The operator can change the magazine by pressing the magazine catch. Pushing the bolt catch will release the bolt. The firearm is ready to fire. 
Manually charging the gun is also possible. The charging handle allows the operator to move the bolt carrier to the rear. Releasing it will chamber a new cartridge. Subscribe now and never miss a new animation.